Today, we're here as a body of believers to worship Jesus Christ. We're here to worship the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And just sometimes we don't understand why we go through the things that we do, but God knows, and He's all knowing, and He's a lot more intelligent than we are. And we have to thank Him for the things that we go through that sometimes seem tough to us. So let's go to him in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for not only the good you send our way, but we thank you for the trials, dear Lord. We know that you're shaping us, dear Lord. And we thank you that you count us worthy because we're not, dear Lord. In our own minds, we're not worthy of everything that you do for us. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus has already given us the greatest gift of all, salvation. For the wages of sin is death, but the three, free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we light the candle of joy, may we may we be reminded of this wonderful gift. Now they were in the same country, shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. <laughs> we don't strive for perfection here, we just get it done. <laughs> One day we'll be in heaven with God. It's going to be the night of the shower. Makes me be in life. I think it's two weeks. Sunday and Easy, Margie. I agree. <laughs> it's a good thing we're going to be at the fire hall. So we can 
So, last week, we learned a little bit about, uh, hopefully learned a lot about how forgiven we are. Does anybody remember how forgiven we are? In the east of the west, that's right. You have been forgiven. You've been, the slate's been cleaned. Been cleaned. Now, some of the problems we talked about is people struggle with, with, with understanding that. How can God forgive someone like me? And that's what I want to talk about today because, you know, you're only going to forgive someone as much as you feel you've been forgiven. You hear that? You're only going to forgive someone as much as you feel you've been forgiven. If you know you've been completely washed, your sins have been made white as snow, you appreciate what God's done for you, what Jesus did for you at the cross. You're grateful beyond a shadow of a doubt. He just wiped the slate. Man, I get to start over. Jesus paid the price for each one of us. It says he became sin who knew no sin, that we could become the righteousness of God. So God came to earth in the likeness of his son, died on the cross for us, gave his son for us. That's forgiveness. That's forgiveness. That means we, it's done. Hebrews says it's done. No more sacrifice for sin. But how do we forgive, though? So when we get in situations, most times someone offends us, someone does something to us, someone cuts us off, someone does something, sometimes we forget that we're supposed to be forgiving. I heard somebody say, well, I don't think Christians are supposed to be doormats. <laughs> you might be surprised after you hear the scripture. A lot of scripture says you're supposed to turn the other cheek. A lot of us don't do that well, do we? Let's raise our hands. We don't do that well. We don't turn the other cheek. Every hand ought to be up in this place. But I know you guys. See, that's a bad problem when a pastor knows you in a little church. No one turns the cheek well. And if you do turn that cheek, you know, there's usually a comment. If I have to turn it again, my uncle did that once. He had a guy come up to him and slugged him. And he said, I turned the other cheek and he slugged me again. Knocked me down to my knees. And the guy just looked at him and couldn't believe it that my uncle wasn't retaliating. Now, if the man, and my uncle said, <laughs> sold this story. He said, if he would have went to hit me a third time, there would have been a problem. He said, God says, turn the other cheek. That one time, he said, you didn't say turn the third time. And I'm like, well. <laughs> but we do struggle with forgiveness. We do. And we have to be reminded, again, like I wanted to do, is remind you how forgiven you have been. As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your sins from you. So who are we sometimes to hold a grudge? Because who does a grudge hurt? Us. Us. Does that, is that where God wants you? No. He set you free from the bondage of sin. If you get angry and there's no righteousness there, you know, you can't prove that you have the privilege to be angry. And if we got as angry at sin as we do at someone who offended us, wow. Think about that. If we got as angry at sin and came at sin like we do someone that's offended us, man. So that's why we've always got to keep our eyes on Christ. Always got to keep our eyes on the cross. Because when he hung up there, he looked down on a, on a very ungrateful, unforgiving people. Screaming, crucify him. All they, they just, but some of the people he healed, some of those people he delivered. And what was his response? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now what could he have done? He could have called down legions of angels. He's God, but he didn't do that. Now, God takes forgiving seriously. So some of us don't think we should. Some of us are struggling with that. Some of it, but, you know, so the bottom line is get in the Word. Again, I'm, I'm driving this thing home. We're going to have a lot of Scripture this morning real quick. I'm probably going to be reading more Scripture than, than yapping this morning, believe it or not. <laughs> but get in the Scripture. God is serious about his forgiveness, but he's also serious about being forgiving because you know who we represent now? Jesus. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we're slaves to who? Christ. And if we're representing Christ, what do we have to be? Forgiving. And the Bible doesn't say that that person's going to be responding. It just says we have to be forgiving. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to start there. 
Matthew chapter 6. Are you all there? Can you all see that far? (laughs) Steve has just long enough arms. (laughs) Let's read the word of God, starting in verse 5, chapter 6. It says, When you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father already knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Now you guys, this ought to sound very familiar. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or trespasses of those who forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors or trespassers. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. But twice in there, forgive me, forgive them. Okay, forgive me, but help me forgive them. You like that? That's the Lord's Prayer, model prayer. But if we would really read that prayer a little bit at a time, we're asking God to meet our every need in every area of our life. But here's the last two verses, 14 and 15. I want you to pay close attention. Starting verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. God, that's no joke forgiveness, is it? God doesn't joke with that. Let's pray. Father, we just come together, Lord. Help us to learn. Help us to grow. Father, help us to be set free completely. Father, help us to be the people you want us to be. Father, help us to be the people that that shine in a world of darkness. Help us never to cover our, our light. Father, just help us to do what you'd have us to do. Because we represent you. If we're saved, if we're washed in the blood, if we've been set free from the bondage of sin, you've forgiven us completely. Help us always to reflect you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, you know, some verses, you know, you can analyze, you can, you know, search the Hebrew, search the Greek, but some verses are pretty plain. You forgive men their trespasses, your Father will forgive you. If you are not, if you're not forgiving, guess what you are? You're judgmental. Did you hear what I said? If you can't be forgiving, you're being judgmental. Who's the true judge? God. Who gets away with anything? No one. You got to let God do His work. Okay? In you and in those folks. But the thing He doesn't want you to do is walking around with the bondage of unforgiveness... Okay, bitterness, okay, guilt that you have no business to carry. If you come to know him as Lord and Savior, that part's been taken care of. If you sin, okay, what does he say in John, 1 John 1, 9? You remember that verse? Now, that doesn't give you license to sin. Because you go back to Romans 6, it uh, tells you we just don't do that to prove God. But 1, 9 says what? Good. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean he forgives you and then you can continue on the way you want to. If you go to God with your sin in your life, you need to be set free from that. You ask him for your But guess what? You're forgiven. Okay? It doesn't say that he'll think about it. 
Okay? It doesn't say that he'll go to the elders in heaven about it. It says what? He'll forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And as Christians, we should hunger and desire that same thing for anybody else we come in dealings with. But sometimes we struggle with that, don't we? We really do. I've heard people say, that, that person will never get saved. I don't know how God could save this person. I don't know how God could save that person. That's not our job. Our job is what? Share the gospel message. And we're supposed to share it in the sense that if God can forgive me, he can forgive anyone. Then somebody said, wow, what have you done? I sinned. I lived in sin. Everyone here is a sinner saved by grace if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you genuinely got saved, how did you feel after that experience? Almost like a breath of fresh air, amen? It's like, wow. And then you kind of get on yourself and say, why did I mess around so long when it's been there all the time? But people do. But it's not our job to judge. It's not our job. Turn to Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Gospel of Mark chapter 11, verse 25. Oops. And it says there's one verse. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Hear that? Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone. Okay, what is God telling you there? What's that verse telling you? He wants you to be free. He doesn't want you to be under the bondage of carrying something that's not yours to carry. Okay? Judge not, and you'll not be judged. But in which way you judge, so you will be judged. Remember, everyone stands before God and gives an accounting. Amen? It says it a couple of times. It says it in Romans. It says it in Corinthians. We will all stand and give an accounting. So, God is promising you that if you do what you're supposed to do for Him, and you trust His Word enough to do that, He'll take care of business. No one gets away with anything. And that's what I think our biggest battle is. We want to see them get their just rewards. And God's saying, no, I want to see you forgive that person. I was reading on the internet a ton of articles of parents forgiving murderers for killing their children. And I mean, I was tearing up. Moms and dads, their daughters brutally raped and murdered, sons murdered. And they were forgiving these people. And you know what some of the comments were? It was neat. said, because that's what God wanted me to do. Now, do you think it was easy? No, not necessarily. We go through those emotions, don't we? I think it's natural. I think there's a good case for kind of a righteous anger. But it's not an anger that allows us to retaliate, does it? It's even not an anger enough to say, I want that man in hell. He deserves hellfire. He deserves a burn. He needs to be with the devil. No, he deserves salvation, whether we like it or not. I love hearing testimonies. Ted Bundy, one of, the, one of the worst serial killers that we know. James Dobson led him to the Lord. Walked out of that place believing in his heart that guy got saved. And if you'll listen to the interview, it'll put chills up your back. Because at the time the interview was going on, all the lights were going on and off because they were testing the electric chair because he was going to die the next day. He didn't get out of anything. He still answered for his crimes. But Dr. Dobson wanted to get in there and give him Jesus. Now, talk to people about that. Really? Why would he waste his time? Because that's forgiveness. See, that's how far God can forgive anybody. We don't understand that sometimes, but he forgave us. But he forgave us. Jeffrey Dahmer, same thing, chaplain. Led him to the Lord. Truly, honestly believed that guy got saved. Jeffrey Dahmer says, I want to go out in general population. He says, you can't, we, if we do that, they'll kill you. He says, it don't matter now. He went out in general population. What did they do to him? Beat him to death with broomsticks. 
Some people think, man, there's no way that guy could get saved. Yeah, really? Who, who are we to say that? You see what I'm saying? If our sins have been forgiven as far as the east to the west, he can forgive anybody he wants to. Amen? It's not our job to determine who gets saved. It's our job to be forgiving. It's our job to carry the gospel message. It's just like when we go down to that breakfast mission. Right, Deb? If we went down there with that kind of hopelessness, why are we wasting God's time? We go down there with the hope of a soul. I don't go down there thinking every one of them is going to get saved. But if one gets saved, we're doing what we were supposed to do. But if we stand up there and we look out at those guys, toothless, hairless, scabby looking, nasty looking, don't smell good, and we stood up there and like, man, Lord, just give me a real quick message so I can get out of here. A lot of people go down there and do that. But that's not why we go down there. We go down there because but for the grace of God, there go I. We've got to remember. We've got to remember they deserve forgiveness. There are pedophiles there. There are molesters there. Those kind of, that's not for me to judge. They need the gospel. God did not create hell for his creation. Amen? Read Matthew 25. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. God says, not, not slack concerning slackness. Not wants none to perish, but all come to repentance. No place in the scripture does it tell us to, to drop the hammer. It says, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. We've got to see people say, we have got to be forgiving. It's not our place to do anything else. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. Let's keep going. I know some of you are scared. He's not going to get through all these. Yeah, I am. Luke chapter 6, verse 37. This is what I just shared with you a little bit earlier. It's in Matthew also. You there? Yes. It says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Hear that? Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Wow. Did you see that? Whatever attitude you have, God's going to use that because He's a just God. If you're condemning, God's going to hold you accountable for that. If you're judgmental, God's going to hold Why? Who's the true judge? Who's going to stand before God? Everybody. If you read Revelations, and I know we got some people who say, I don't like Revelations because it's scary. No, it gives us the end result. We win. That will be an exciting book. Go just read the end of it. Last chapter, we win. Doesn't matter what happens in between. We win, but people won't read that. It promises we'll get blessed if we read that book. But there's people who won't read it because they're scared. Don't be scared. If you belong to Christ, you've been taken care of. You've been taken care of, but there's going to be two books open. We even probably got family members that we feel don't deserve to go to heaven. But there's going to be two books that are going to be open. Lamb's Book of Life and that other book. And if your name's not written, what? In the Lamb's Book of Life. You're not going in there. Who's entitled to be in the Lamb's Book of Life? Everybody. Everybody. We've got to be forgiving. We've got to walk in the light of Christ. If people don't see Jesus in us, who are they going to see it in? Think about that. Think about that. Our speech, our mannerisms, everything we need to do. Is everybody perfect? No. That's why we have messages like this. We all struggle with that sometimes. I've had to ask God for forgiveness for me, waving my hands all over, getting nuts over somebody cutting me off. Karen reminds me, she says, they don't know whether you're not flipping them the bird or not. I said, I'm not flipping them the bird. I wouldn't do that. But she said, how did they know that? If your hands are flying, you know what they see? Yeah, they, they see you being like everybody else. I heard a joke. I went, it was a quick joke. And I thought it was kind of cute. We put it, on, it was on Facebook. Margie, you liked it and you shared it. 
This woman was tailgating a guy. Okay? Tailgating this guy. Well, this guy decided, you know what irks me too? When I'm reading this, I start getting tickled. Because I'm like, you had the yellow light go! I could have made that! But this woman's tailgating him. That's breaking law number one. The guy stops at the yellow light. She's going all kinds of crazy. She's blowing her horn and just flipping him to break. It's going crazy. So all of a sudden she hears a... And she looks over and there's a police officer tapping on her window. He's like, man, would you step out of your car? Steps out, handcuffs her, takes her to jail. So she's down in the holding pen... Finally, another police officer comes and gets her. He said, ma'am, we need to take you down to the arresting officer. We need to talk with you. So he takes her down and he says, uh, ma'am, I, I need to apologize. Uh, I made a mistake arresting you. But, you know, when I seen that Choose Life, the chrome bumper sticker of the fish, you know, Jesus saves, all these bumper stickers out of there, he said, I thought you must have stole that car. <laughs> Somebody commented back to me and said, Pastor, is that why you don't have bumper stickers on you? All kinds of funny bumper stickers. <laughs> the main thing is, I don't want to disgrace Christ. If I'm going to act like an idiot, you know, I don't want people saying that. See, that's those Christians. They think they're perfect. They say, I'm not perfect. That's why you get scriptures like this. That's why you get messages like this. We all deal with this stuff. But we've got to remember, we were forgiven. And we at least got to be as forgiving as we were forgiven. Amen? That's the key thing that you want. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Bumper stickers. <laughs> they can be your downfall. Ephesians chapter 4. Hope you're writing these down. If you don't, I got... Uh, I'll let you look at this sheet too. Chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind hearted to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Hear that? Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you forgave you. Wow. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. This is one of my favorites. What's that? Oh. oh. Well see, let me, let me share something with you. I know I go all over the place, but you know what that tells you? You need to be listening. If I'm quoting scripture, it doesn't make no difference where I'm coming. My, if everything was that perfect, my goodness, I wouldn't be up here. <laughs> but this particular lesson, I want you to understand that God does not joke around with forgiveness. Doesn't joke around. Doesn't joke around for forgiveness. Colossians 3, I'm going to read verses 1 through 17. Ready? Okay, go back to Matthew. <laughs> and you know what? I don't make no dirt. You got to forgive me. <laughs> and even if you don't, guess what? I still go home and take my nap. <laughs> now, let's read the Word of God. Starting in verse 1. Colossians chapter 3. If then you were raised with Christ... Seek those things that are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. For you die, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. It's because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. 
But now you yourselves are to put off all these things. Listen to this. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man in his deeds. And have put on the new man who is what? Renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Wow. Wow. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. See, Scripture doesn't mess around, does it? Doesn't put questions in it. Must, must do. But above all, these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And listen to this. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Let's pray. Father, we know we have work to do. And that's all right. That's all right. That's why we come here. That's why we do what we do. We read, we pray, we seek your face. Fathers, we sing Christmas carols through the year. They're just filled with forgiveness, for salvation, redemption. All these re gentle reminders. Sometimes we miss those things. Sometimes the struggles in our lives, Lord, we know, are because of the things probably more than likely we refuse to do. So, Father, I just pray right now that you would come against any spirit of refusal, rejection. Father, there's someone here that's hurting, feeling unforgiven. If there's someone here that that's battling forgiveness. Father, that you would set them free. That they would sit and understand how much you loved them and cared for them. That you didn't deem them unworthy of salvation when they cried unto you. Father, we're a growing church. We're a young church. But Father, your church needs to be a light in a world of darkness. Help us to be the most different church. Help us to hunger and desire to live your word daily in our lives. Convict hearts to be in your word. Father, because faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. You speak to us through your word. And you want to speak to every individual here today. In a special way. Especially if they're struggling in these areas. Father, if there's one person here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. We know they're probably struggling even more. Father, I take authority over that, that spirit of doubt that might come against them. Lord, if they're feeling that they're not worthy to come before you. Or they feel they have to fix themselves before they come before you. There's nothing that we can do except come before you, Lord, and ask your forgiveness for the sins we've committed against you. That we can walk in your righteousness. Deliver, heal, set free this morning. Let no one leave this place carrying any baggage with them, Lord. Pray that they would leave it at the foot of the cross. They would leave it before your throne. 
Touch them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' precious name, amen.